This story, which is referred to technically as a parable, a parable is an earthly story that has a heavenly meaning. But it's also a kind of speech that's called rhetoric. Rhetoric is a speech that's intended to convince the hearers to change their view and adopt the view that's being presented in story form. Jesus was a master storyteller. And the thing about it, he always hooked people from the heart. You listen to the story, and all of a sudden, you align yourself with the perspective of the master, who is really God. And you get angry at the guy with the one talent who misused it. And you align yourself with the master's perspective. Next thing, you're hooked from the heart and you're saying, throw that servant outside. You feel like you want to help the master throw him outside because of how he mishandled the money. When I think about money, I never learned how to handle money from the home in which I grew up in. Though my father was an accountant, never sat down with us and maybe he never knew that that was part of his role and assignment. Neither did my mother, and she was an educator. And I never learned how to handle money from school. And I've been in school for a lot of years, even two years after doctorate, postdoctoral education. I've been in school a long time. I'm a schoolman. I learned how to handle money from life, from reading books, from studying the Bible, and getting around people that handled money. And I made myself a student so I can learn. Because I wanted God to be able to trust me with money. And there are lessons in this parable that we can glean from. And I'm going to pull out a couple of these lessons to share with you. And I don't want to focus so much on the lesson. I really want to focus on the learning. So if I don't go through all the lessons, that's okay as long as you learn the lessons I've already presented. First lesson is this. You must be responsible with money. It seems like, ah, give me something heavier than that. No, let's start there. Really, let's start there. Because the master in this story was God. We can be any one of the three servants. Watch what's going on. The master decides to go on a journey. The Bible is silent as to where he's going and how long he'll be going or gone on this journey. What we do understand, though, is that before he goes, he decides to partner with three of his servants. So I want us to understand that God is already partnering with us. We must look at ourselves as a partner with God. And so the way we deal with money is a reflection of how we partner with God with his money. So we're really stewards or caretakers of that which belongs to God. But before the master goes on a journey, he calls three servants. Apparently he was watching them all along. Not maybe for a week, for two weeks, a month, maybe for a year, maybe even longer. He was watching their work ethic, their behavior, their habits, their decision-making processes. And based on their abilities, he was able to distinguish that they each had a different level of ability, different level of capacity, different level to grow wealth, different level of understanding in regards to money. And he wanted to give all of them a shot at making more money because he had something in mind because apparently he was going through some real growth stages in his own business. One guy he brings to him, he says, I want to give you five talents. A talent in Bible days was equal to $19,000. Five times 19 is $95,000. So imagine if the person sitting next to you, who's quite generous and quite wealthy, gave you $95,000 before the end of the service and said, look, I'm going to be going away for a while. You won't see me at Christ Church for, for a period of time. I'm here is $95,000. Work my money until I return. Now, I hope you're not going to run away and we'll never see you again. But, <laughs> but $95,000 is a lot of money. And so the master gives the first servant $95,000 or five talents. The other guy, he gives two talents, $38,000. The third guy, he gives $19,000 or one talent. My point, you have to be responsible with money. The first two guys, what did they do? The moment they had the money, the Bible says at once they went and put the money to work. So you never 
procrastinate or delay the dealing with money. When you have been entrusted with money, and I don't want you to think for a moment, when I get a lot of money, then I'll be responsible. That's not how it works. God always tests us by what we already have to determine if he'll give us more. 